Good morning and welcome to morning prayer on Friday the 11th of February. O oh Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, creator of all, to you be praise and glory forever. As your dawn renews the face of the earth, bringing the light and life to all creation. May we rejoice in this day you have made as we awake refreshed from the depths of sleep. Open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God, forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, Set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our psalm for today is Psalm 31, beginning with the refrain. Into your hands I commend my spirit. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Mm -hmm. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a fortress to save me. For you are my rock and my stronghold. Guide me and lead me for your name's sake. Take me out of the net that they have laid secretly for me. For you are my strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, O Lord, God of truth. I hate those who cling to worthless idols. I put my trust in the Lord. I will be glad and rejoice in your mercy. For you have seen my affliction and known my soul in adversity. You have not shut me up in the hand up in the hand of the enemy, you have set my feet in an open place. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I am in trouble. My eyes consumed with sorrow, my soul and my body also. For my life is wasted with grief and my years with sighing. My strength fails me because of my affliction and my bones are consumed. I have become a reproach to all my enemies and even to my neighbours, an object of dread to my acquaintances. When they see me in the street, they flee from me. I am forgotten like one that is dead, out of mind. I have become like a broken vessel, for I've heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is on every side. They scheme together against me and plot to take my life. But my trust is in you, O Lord. I have said, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servants and save me for your mercy's sake. Lord, let me not be confounded, for I've called upon you. But let the wicked be put to shame. Let them be silent in the grave. Let the lying lips be put to silence that speak against the righteous with arrogance, disdain and contempt. How abundant is your goodness, O Lord, which you have laid up for those who fear you, which you have prepared in the sight of all for all those who put their trust in you. You hide them in the shelter of your presence from those who slander them. You keep them safe in your refuge from the strife of tongues. Blessed be the Lord, 
for he has shown me his steadfast love when I was a city besieged. I had said in my alarm, I've been cut off from the sight of your eyes. Nevertheless, you heard the voice of my prayer when I cried out to you. Love the Lord, all you his servants, for the Lord protects the faithful, but repays to the full the proud. Be strong and let your heart take courage, all you who wait in hope for the Lord. Into your hands I commend my spirit. Lord Jesus Christ, when scorn and shame besiege us and hope is veiled in grief, Help us in, hold us in your wounded hands and make your face shine on us again. For you are our Lord and God. Amen. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. And now Angela will bring us our Old and New Testament readings. The Old Testament reading today is from Leviticus chapter 25, verses 1 to 24. The Lord spoke to Moses on Mount Sinai, saying, Speak to the people of Israel and say to them, When you enter the land that I am giving you, the land shall observe a Sabbath for the Lord. For six years you shall sow your field, and for six years you shall prune your vineyard and gather in their yield. But in the seventh year there shall be a Sabbath of complete rest for the land, a Sabbath for the Lord. You shall not sow your field or prune your vineyard. You shall not reap the aftergrowth of your harvest or gather the grapes of your unpruned vine. It shall be a year of complete rest for the land. You may eat what the land yields during its Sabbath. You, your male and female slaves, your hired and your bound labourers who live with you, for your livestock also and for the wild animals in your land, all its yield shall be for food. You shall count off seven, year, seven weeks of years, seven times seven years so that the period of seven weeks of years gives 49 years. Then you shall have the trumpet sounded loud on the tenth day of the seventh month, on the Day of Atonement, you shall have the trumpet sounded throughout all your land, and you shall hallow the fiftieth year, and you shall proclaim liberty throughout the land to all its inhabitants. It shall be a jubilee for you, you shall return, every one of you, to your property and every one of you to your family. That fiftieth year shall be a jubilee for you. You shall not sow or reap the aftergrowth or harvest the unpruned vines, for it is a jubilee. It shall be holy to you. You shall eat only what the field itself produces. In this year of Jubilee, you shall return, every one of you, to your property. When you make a sale to your neighbour or buy from your neighbour, you shall not cheat one another. When you buy from your neighbour, you shall pay only for the number of years since the Jubilee. The seller shall charge you only for the remaining crop years. If the years are more, you shall increase the price, and if the years are fewer, you shall diminish the price, for it is a certain number of harvests that are being sold to you. You shall not cheat one another, but you shall fear your God, for I am the Lord your God. You shall observe my statutes and faithfully keep my ordinances, so that you may live on the land securely. The land will yield its fruit and you will eat your fill and live on it securely. Should you ask, what shall we eat in the seventh year, if we may not sow or gather in our crop? I will order my blessing for you in the sixth year, so that it will yield a crop for three years. 
When you sow in the eighth year, you will be eating from the old crop until the ninth year, when its produce comes in, you shall eat the old. The land shall not be sold in perpetuity, for the land is mine. With me, you are but aliens and tenants. Throughout the land that you hold, you shall provide for the redemption of the land. This is the word of the Lord. And the New Testament reading comes from 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 1 to 16. Do not speak harshly to an older man, but speak to him as to a father, to younger men as brothers, to older women as mothers, to younger women as sisters with absolute purity. Honour widows who are really widows. If a widow has children or grandchildren, they should first learn their religious duty to their own family and make some repayment to their parents, for this is pleasing in God's sight. The real widow, left alone, has set her hope on God and continues in supplications and prayers night and day. But the widow who lives for pleasure is dead even while she lives. Give these commands as well, so that they may be above reproach. And whoever does not provide for relatives, and especially for family members, has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Let a widow be put on the list if she is not less than 60 years old and has been married only once. She must be well attested for her good works, as one who has brought up children, shown hospitality, washed the saints' feet, helped the afflicted, and devoted herself to doing good in every way. But refuse to put younger widows on the list, for when their sensual desires alienate them from Christ, they want to marry, and so they incur condemnation for having violated their first pledge. Besides that, they learn to be idle, gadding about from house to house, and they are not merely idle, but also gossips and busybodies, saying what they should not say. So I would have younger widows marry, bear children, and manage their households, so as to give the adversary no occasion to revile us. For some have already turned away to follow Satan, if any believing woman has relatives who are really widows, let her assist them. Let the church not be burdened so that it can assist those who are real widows. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. He will say, I labor. 
Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. Make haste to help me, O Lord of my salvation. Be not far from me, O my God. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. We say the Benedictus together, beginning with the refrain. Give your people knowledge of salvation, O God, by the forgiveness of all their sins. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. A new child shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. 
In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Give your people knowledge of salvation, O God, by the forgiveness of all their sins. We come now to our time of intercessions. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Heavenly Father, we ask that you will be with us today in all that we do, all that we say, all that we think. Guide us and lead us by your Holy Spirit. We bring before you, Lord, the world and its needs. We pray for those countries around the world that are suffering, Lord, because of natural disasters, recovering, Lord, from volcano eruptions, from fire and flooding. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we bring before you, Lord, the church and her life, and we pray for our two archbishops, Justin and Stephen. We pray also, Lord, for our bishops, Martin, Ruth and Will, here in the Diocese of Chichester. <laughs> and we bring before you, Lord, Gaz and Gary, and the leaders here in Bullwater. We thank you, Lord, for the youth work. And Andy Paul, we thank you for the children's work with Carl and Vladka. And we give thanks, Lord, for Mums and Tots and Messy Church. We thank you for the pastoral team, for Jackie Marshall. Lord, we thank you for our church wardens and those who lead and serve so faithfully across our church sites every week. Thank you for them, Lord. Bless them, guide them and lead them, we pray. And we pray for the Queen and members of Parliament and the armed forces. Our Lord, we continue to lift you, um, Queen Elizabeth, as she continues to grieve the death of Prince Philip, Lord. We give thanks for this platinum jubilee that she will be celebrating later on in the year, Lord. We pray for all the plans that are being made across the country. We ask for wisdom for our government and give thanks for the protection and the work of the armed forces, not only serving us here, but around the world, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for peace and justice in the world and for those who work for reconciliation. Those whose lives have been devastated by war and civil strife. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, we bring to you this morning those who are prisoners, the refugees and the homeless. Father, give us your tender, caring, compassionate heart for those who are suffering. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, as we close, Lord, we bring to you those we know who are suffering mentally, emotionally, physically, psychologically. Lord, that you will send your Holy Spirit, the Comforter, that you will bring healing and peace. We thank you for our NHS. We thank you for the doctors and nurses and all those working in the community and care homes. 
and in a moment's quiet, we just bring to you, Lord, those we know who need a touch of your healing this morning. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, hear us. Graciously hear us. And the collect of the day. Oh God, you know us to be set in the midst of so many and great dangers that by reason of the frailty of our nature, we cannot always stand upright. Grant to us such strength and protection as may support us in all dangers and carry us through all temptations. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Hope you have a really um, good weekend. Stay safe. Remember to check um, the news sheet, which is sent online, all the services that are happening and all the different activities. And uh, as we close together, let's say, the Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.